It is my great pleasure to introduce Grant Elliott, a member of Be the Change Barrington's leadership team. Launched in June of 2020 by Barrington High School alumni, the coalition aims to move the Barrington community in a more inclusive direction for students and families of color through improving the culture and discussion around race, starting with Barrington 220 schools. Having lived in North Barrington for over 10 years, Grant is a 2016 graduate of BHS and a 2020 graduate of Northwestern University. Congratulations, Grant. He is currently an analyst for a management consulting firm working out of Boston, Massachusetts. Hello, Grant. Welcome to Courageous Community, Courageous Conversations tonight. Pleasure, Jess. How are you? I'm great, and I'm so thrilled that you're here. As a fellow BHS alum, I'm very proud of the work that you're doing, and I'm uh, thrilled to have you share with our guests tonight. So let's start. You and your collaborators surveyed over 600 current and former Barrington students. Can you share briefly your top findings? Absolutely. And in reference to the 600 that you mentioned, this was a survey that we decided to put out uh, shortly after the murder of George Floyd and the racial protests in Minnesota. Uh, the survey when we decided to put it out was roughly around June. And ultimately, when we decided to take the findings, we were at 634 respondents. Um, as you can see by slide one, our first thing that we wanted to look at was really um, if this presence of racism is still here in the community that we all know and love. Unfortunately, the survey served us right. 78.8% of the respondents of the survey agreed that racism is still an issue in Barrington schools. Again, we hope that this wasn't the case, but we all had our... Oh, Grant, you just muted somehow. Can you hear us? There we go. Oh. Perfect, can you hear me now? I can, thank you. Great. So from this, we wanna dive deeper and look not just at the racism there, but how it persists in the schools and in the community that we know. The next fact was really startling, really. It was that only 38.8% of the respondents believe that they were comfortable in intervening if a student or any of their community members were subject to racism of any kind. Unfortunately, this is something that you know we've all experienced whether we witnessed it, whether we experienced it ourselves. And unfortunately, this, the statistics show that this still persisted. Mm -hmm. The next number that I wanna show uh, really revolves around, excuse me, um, the respondents in terms of how they address the racial discrimination, uh, not just themselves, as we saw previously, but also how the school did as well. Unfortunately, only 19.1% believe that Barrington 220 staff was adequately able to address acts of racial discrimination. Mm -hmm. And again, we wanna preface that we understand that racial discrimination is not the only type that persists in these schools, but for the sake of this survey, this was highlighted solely to focus on racism and other acts such as that. The final statistic was, in my opinion, the status to look at, um, especially because the great education that we get in these schools, you know, can be tainted, especially by your social experience. And if that's not always equal by those who attend, it's sad. The final statistic shows that in only 7.2% believing that Barrington schools effectively address the issue of racial inequality. Again, we wanna work at BATCB to work with the school district to make sure that this number is a thing of the past and we move forward together. Wow, it's so impressive that you've been able to gather the data and do that work in such a short amount of time. In your report, you offered 19 recommendations for the school district. Can you share maybe the first three with us? Yeah, absolutely. So recommendation number one, and again, these are solely recommendations viewed on the lens of time sensitivity and application of potential. There's no mandate, there's no prescriptive timeline. There are 19 opportunities to improve the school and the community that we care about. Number one is release a widely accessible statement in support of BIPOC students, that's Black, Indigenous, people of color, especially Black students that detail plan for racial equity and condemn race, recent events of police brutality and acknowledges systemic racism that's present. This was done by the school district and we're happy to say that the appointment of Nate Rouse, the new director of race, equity and cultural diversity initiatives is a definite step in the right direction. Number two was to design a transparent plan to promote anti-racism, diversity, equity and inclusion. Again, we await further confirmation of this, but we know that it's headed in the right direction from the school district. Number three, and this is one that we will continue to push for and hope that it's in London soon, is that we mandate anti-racism and unconscious bias training 
for both educators and students. Again, it's not just enough to be against racism. It has to be anti-racist. And we wanna promote that not only in the students that we affect in the communities that we're in, but especially in the school district that we care about. Thanks, Grant. Um, everyone should definitely read the full report. Uh, it's fantastic and it's informative. Um, Grant, what would you like people here to leave with? What is it that we should know? Again, I hope the numbers speak for themselves and I hope they convey that this is not a hypothetical. It's an actual occurrence in this community where we all live. And again, I know we have people from other communities, but I urge you to look at them as well. Again, this is not something that is omniscient. It's something right in front of your face, so long as you're willing to open your eyes. And that's what we're trying to get through the numbers. Again, the majority of our coalition are removed from BHS at least four years. We do have current students who are currently experiencing it. Um, and we have others who are gone for 10 years, but we all wanted to come back and see if this is still present and it is. And again, please understand that this affects someone that you may know tangentially, always does, always has. And hopefully we continue to move that forward and get rid of that as well. The next thing is to lead an empathy in all that you do. Again, each and every one of us here on this call and those in our lives are leaders. Whether we lead in our company, whether we lead in our school, whether we lead our parents, our kids, our brothers, our sisters, we're all leaders. And what you do every single day matters. You're either getting better or you're getting worse in this respect. And we wanna lead through empathy and compassion and awareness in everything that we do. And finally, we do have another survey out. This is designed to get narratives that can be public facing and potentially in accordance with hopefully the implementation of recommendation number three, be used in anti-bias training, fully contextualized for teachers so that they can understand that real scenarios do happen in front of their eyes if they don't always know it. And again, this happens, but it's our job to make sure that they're better prepared for the future and better to make this more a more inclusive community. Again, you can find the links to these surveys and our full 72 page public facing document in the link in our bio on our Instagram. So please go follow at be the change Barrington. And hopefully we can all make this community that we all care about a better place for all. Grant, thank you so much. This work is essential and so impressive. And I remember you telling us early on uh, when we first met that uh, many of the alumni on your team are working full-time other jobs. Some of them are even on the front lines fighting COVID in hospitals and um, in emergency uh, services. And I just wanna thank you so much uh, for coming together and working triple time and being able to move um, us forward in this community and coming back and investing your time and energy in this community again. Um, thank thank you, you so much. Thank you, Jess. Again, couldn't do it without a great coalition behind me. And it's a pleasure to represent them and speaking to you tonight. So uh, many people are asking about how to see the report. I know Claire's just popped it up in the chat. Um, and also you can learn more at Be the Change Barrington um, on the screen right now. It looks like they have some more information. Follow them on Instagram as well. Um, and, uh, and please go ahead and, and fill out the survey and be a participant if you so choose and are so moved. Grant, thank you so much. I'm going to hand this back to Zena.